The M4 Mac Mini has a lot going for it. At the base model of $599 or $499 if you're a student, this tiny machine packs a punch. And for a lot of people, this can be your everyday computer. But for me, as someone that's a content creator, and someone who watches a lot of videos and I edit a lot of videos, I'm hearing that the M4 chip is pretty much only for those people that are using the computer casually, basic tasks. And the point of this video is to challenge those sentiments. I wanna see what it's like to use this computer for everything that I do on a regular day basis. So on top of my thoughts and impressions, I'm gonna go into what it's like to edit 4K videos with multiple layers and effects, export videos and photo files, and seeing if this thing overheats. But more importantly, I'm gonna give my thoughts on that problematic power button that's on the bottom. I'm just kidding. But seriously, let's start with the basics. Now full disclosure, I ended up getting the version with the updated SSD. So it has 512 gig to keep you up to speed. And just in case you missed it, this computer has a 16 core neural engine with a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU. In terms of ports, it's rocking two USB-C ports at the front, one 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the back. It has three Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI port and an ethernet port. In terms of where these ports are placed, I have no issues with them being at the front. I think it makes it great for ease of use and allows you to easily plug in any external SSDs that you'll need. And Lord knows you're gonna need it. This is where it gets interesting though. The bottom has the power button, which people have been making a big fuss about online. It's not really a problem to me. And to be honest, I never turn off my Mac. It just does not need to be turned off. And think about it, if Apple put it anywhere else, it will be really ugly on this thing and it will stand out. So I stand with Apple on this. Now I can't talk about the Mac mini without talking about the size. Apple decided this year to shrink down the size of the Mac mini and it's insanely small for a computer this powerful. It's five by five by two inches and it has a tiny footprint. On my desk, it looks sleek and it's like a shrunken down Mac studio. It saves space for other things on my desk, but I do wanna get back to the size for a bit. It's actually crazy how this thing can fit into a small space. And although it's not meant to be a portable device, it still gets major points for its size because if you look back on computers, those things were chonkas back in the day. They were huge. One thing I did want to mention that I don't think a lot of people mentioned at all in the reviews or videos about the Mac mini is that this thing has built in speakers. They aren't both level sounding speakers and overall they sound decent. They're pretty much just overall good enough to watch YouTube videos. But personally, I just use AirPods or maybe another headset. Let's spend a few minutes talking about my personal setup to make this Mac work for me. It's actually pretty budget friendly and it won't break the bank. For my mouse, I use a Logitech MX Master 3. It's a pretty popular mouse and I won't mention it too much other than to say it's way better than the Magic Mouse. That thing sucks. For monitor, I use this LG 4K monitor that I got a few years ago. It's okay. I do wish it had USB-C, but it is pretty color accurate. And the keyboard that I use is this random mechanical keyboard that I bought on Amazon. I like the design. It looks a little bit like Keychron and it works on Bluetooth or wireless if you wanted to. And one thing you're gonna need is a webcam and that's where today's sponsor, Obsbot, comes in. This is the Obsbot Meet 2, which is an AI powered 4K webcam. This is one of those things that are perfect for all those calls, meetings, and streaming moments since there's no built-in camera on the Mac mini. Honestly, it looks fire. It even comes in a few colors. I've got this color and it adds a nice touch to my desk setup. It definitely stands out. This webcam isn't just compact for the look of it. And that's because being tiny has its perks. It's super lightweight, which means if you're using a laptop, you can just attach it to the top of the magnetic mount. And since it's so small, you won't feel any extra bulk. It's perfect for anyone that likes a portable setup and you're always on the go, which I know is, can be a little bit hard with the Mac mini. It makes meetings and streaming on the go so much easier. I love this thing. It's really smart. The Me Too uses advanced AI to detect movement in real time, and it even has gesture control, which is probably one of my favorite features. You can just raise your hand to activate auto framing or make an L shape and it zooms in or out smoothly. It's super clutch, especially if you're moving around a lot during calls or you wanna adjust without having to fidget with buttons. As for video quality, it's top tier. Honestly, it's some of the cleanest looking footage I've seen on a webcam. And again, I'm surprised that it's so small, but can do this. This webcam shoots in 4K, like I said, so your streams and calls look vivid and sharp, which makes a big difference, even in bad lighting. The audio is solid too, with built-in noise reduction and auto gain adjustment. Basically, you'll sound as crisp as you look, which is great if you're presenting or you just want to make sure you're heard clearly by the people on your stream. It can shoot in portrait mode too. So if you're recording for a TikTok or IG, you can do it right from your laptop without needing to change the, your whole setup. Fun fact, right now is one of the best times to pick it up because of their Black Friday sales. So go ahead and click the link in the description and pick up the Meet 2 today.
The M4 Mac Mini kind of intrigued me mostly because of its speeds combined with the price. And I did wonder if it could handle my personal workflow. I mostly use the M1 Pro MacBook Pro base model. That's the 14 inch for video editing. And it's been great to me. However, I did notice the rainbow of death a couple of times. So I had to wonder if the M4 Mac mini would help me change that. So I did a few tests. All right, so in the first test, I'm gonna be doing a basic video export where it is 4K. I have audio in the background. I have a couple of titles on the video as well. And now this one, I double up the timeline. It's similar footage, but it's a little bit longer and it is pretty impressive but I gotta say that in comparison with my M1 Pro MacBook Pro, they're very similar in terms of speed and export times for a longer video and my basic kind of video. One thing I do pretty often is track titles and I noticed that I was able to do that pretty fast and accurately as well. So the chip is really powerful. Now moving on to Lightroom, I imported a few pictures. I wanted to see how long it would take and it did that pretty fast as well. I was able to edit raw photos pretty quickly and I didn't have one hiccup in Lightroom. Now we know that the Mac at this time of this video is not at the front of gaming. People really use PCs because PCs are just way far ahead when it comes to Mac in terms of gaming. But as someone who admittedly is not a gamer, I still want to see if the Mac mini will perform well when gaming. And so I loaded up Resident Evil 4 and got to playing and I was surprised by how buttery smooth it was. I didn't have any slowdown or lagging of frames and graphics looks pretty good to me with my 4K display and the GPU in the Mac mini. So in terms of performance, the M4 chip on the Mac mini is able to perform pretty well in terms of my workflow. Of course, I'm not a Hollywood editor, but some of the edits 4K footage and exports multiple videos per week, this is pretty solid, although it's not miles ahead of my M1 Pro. Now, a quick minute on overheating. I'm happy to report that this thing did not have an issue with heating, and that's thanks to the crazy thermals that Apple packed into this thing. The fan at the bottom dissipates heats very well, and it's just cool to touch. I did have to lean in closer to hear the fans running in Final Cut Pro when exporting, but other than that, I think it was really silent overall when using it. Let's talk about the problems with the M4 Mac Mini. Of course, the Mac Mini is not perfect. There's no computer, no human being that is. And there are a few things that I wish it had to make its value stand out a little bit more. And one is that I wish it had an SD card slot on it, like the Mac Studio. The issue with not having one is that I need to use a dongle. Also 256 gigs of base model storage is atrocious in 2024 and you're going to need to pick up an external SSD to edit files. I already use about half of the storage just by downloading a few games and my Final Cut Pro library. I went into this in a previous video and I stand on it that if you buy any other models besides the base model like I did, you're gonna lose a bit of value. In Canada, I paid around 1,200 for this one and the base model is around 800 Canadian dollars. So the true value lies in the base version because it's so cheap and it still can do the tasks that you need it to do. I think this computer is great for those that are on a budget and already have a mouse, a keyboard, and a display. If you don't have those things, you're gonna spend at least four to $700 more on those extra things that you need, and that's a factor in the cost, and it's better to probably buy a MacBook Air or look at the iMacs. But besides that, this Mac is extra powerful extra small and pushes Apple ahead of any competition. And most importantly, for someone like you to watch this video, you can handle 4K video editing and more. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more videos on the Mac mini. So let me know in the comments down below any other questions that you might have. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, peace.